saying good afternoon everyone here my name is Ross and I would like to welcome you all guys to our Friday update here on Data Dash. Today as discussed with Nick since there is something super important what happened in the chart recently I'd like to step a little bit away from other asset classes and cover that particular one that in my opinion while observing it for the last four years is providing the generational entry opportunity and a potential 10, 12, 15x targets with an extremely, extremely limited downside. And for those who already know me a little bit, you might understand that I would like to speak here about silver miners. As you see on the chart, and we'll cover those charts also in details, guys, I would provide you today my 10 best plays, my uh, entry points, my position sizings. You can already see that even to recover the post COVID move, we would be and around 5x from here. And if it's just gonna come back to the areas of 2011 when silver was in the higher 30s, we're speaking here of 12 to 15x. And this is why, in my opinion, since not so many people have been yet awakened to those, please bear with me during that video. And guys, with all that said, let's go. Of course, we spoke multiple times before about how Fed is stuck into this catch 22, where on one hand side, they are not able to increase the interest rate anymore, despite the inflation fears. And on the other hand side, they need to provide more liquidity to the markets to make sure things are not going to get broken via multiple ways and forms like yield curve control and M2 supply increase and so on and so forth. So that's very bullish for gold. And then you can ask me, okay, I understand about this boring gold with $11 trillion asset class. Go talk to Peter Schiff. What about silver? And I'm like, guys, silver is a completely different story because silver is majorly used in heavy industries and cutting edge technology technologies, silver also tends to outperform gold significantly during the precious metal bull rallies. Silver is way more uh, a better hedge, a better hedge against inflation and against uh, all this equity volatilities that can happen because silver has a huge industrial use and thus a lower correlation with an equity market. And if we're gonna take anything that surrounds us, I mean, from your mobile phone that has at least 0.3 grams of silver, it sounds like not too much, but we're producing nearly 1.5 billion of smartphones every year. If you are bullish on the future of mobility, ESG, and um, anything that relates to solar panels, Nick has mentioned this multiple times, please keep in mind that average Tesla would have between 25 to 50 grams of silver. So this is not something to be disregarded. Now let's go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, where else do we need silver? So what does ChatGPT tell us? Obviously currency in monetary metals, but then industrial applications, photography, medicine, water purification, catalysis, reflectivity, investments. But what about semiconductors? Mm, apologies for the oversight. Definitely bonding wires, conductive paste, thermal management, and much more. But then you would say, guys, no, but silver is cheap. It's like 20 whatever dollars per ounce. How I can make money with that stuff? What's really important to keep in mind that current gold to silver ratio or GSR is around 85 to 1. So gold is 84, 85 times more expensive than silver. But the amount of gold to silver in the Earth's crust is just 19 to 1. And currently we are mining is just 9 to 1. So silver in a long run would become much more demanded comparing to what it is right now. And let's have a look at the chart because gold to silver ratio is something you can chart easily as well. So how does the chart look to you? For me, it's quite a no brainer. <laughs> We've been printing lower highs and lower lows for the last several months. So in my opinion, we basically broke down into that range. And that's why, as I said, in one of the previous interviews with Nick, I would not be shy away from the lower targets. Initially, 40 to 50. And further on, as you can see from the fundamental analysis, it can go all the way down to 20s, 30s. Of course, the moves like those, those Kondraty waves, those are huge moves that might take us multiple decades, but we don't need to bet 
for such a long time and be in those markets. It's just 2x silver move from here. And I will show you guys why a lot of our miners would already easily do 3 to 5x. So let's, for example, take uh, the case where we have a particular silver miner and it produces the ounce of silver at around $20, while the price of silver on the market is around $22. So the silver miner is generating $2 per ounce. However, what happens if the price of silver goes up all the way to $26, while the cost of production, which is driven by the operations and geolocation and multiple other factors that are fixed for a particular producer stays the same, the profit goes up to $6. So with the silver price just going $4 up, the profit is going three times higher. What happens if the price of silver goes all the way to $32? The profit that the same particular miner is generating is right now $12. So from $2 to $12, we have a six times jump in profit for just $10 growth in the silver price, which is less than 20% from the initial $22. And this is actually the exact reason why, for example, since the beginning of March, silver has done 20% move but for example, the certain bigger producer like First Majestic has conducted 75% move and the certain smaller junior producer with $2 million market cap like Pantera Silver Corporation have printed roughly 300% move. This is exactly guys how it works. One important factor on top of all, sometimes it's a little bit counterintuitive, but trust me, since I'm in this market for many, many years, I understand that it makes more sense to actually acquire the particular producer with a higher cost, as you can remember in the previous slide, the higher cost of production to make the marginal impact of an increase in an ounce dollar price even higher. Of course, that's not going to work in an environment where you believe the silver prices can drop. And of course, that can be a very detrimental input for a collapse of that miner. But if you are bullish, if you believe in a long-term uptrend, that's how you play that game. Higher beta and tighten validation. Now, how low could we go? For those of you who missed my today's short, I would say that if we even pull out the Fibonacci extension here, I do not think that we would tap the golden pocket in this area, I clearly think will be significantly front run and 0.328. So something around 26.2 uh, or maximum 25.8 uh, is the price level where I believe silver would correct to and then continue its uprise to 28 or $32. Does it mean that miners are going to correct that much as well? Actually, absolutely not. But for those who've been watching my streams for the last couple of weeks, you remember that I've been covering the Junior Silver Miners ETF or SILG. It's by far not my favorite way to get allocated and I will cover that in a second. I'm actually owning the stocks of particular 70 companies roughly. We don't need to cover that much since I have a very large portfolio and this is my main asset class that I'm actually exposed to way more than crypto, way more than Bitcoin due to, as I explained, in my opinion, asymmetrical risk to reward. I understand not everyone can be that allocated. And for that reason, the easiest way to actually have one position in your portfolio would be simply covering SILG. I believe the good level to scale in will be around 10 or if given this order block around 9.5. The main reason why I wanted to run this stream today, purely dedicated to silver, is this following. If we are going to look on the weekly time frame or monthly time frame, and we're going to chart the relative strengths of silver junior minor ETF versus silver, we will see that on a weekly time frame, we are just printing this W formation. And once we are breaking up from there, the miners vis-a-vis -vis silver are going to significantly outperform. So that's why it's very, very important, guys, in my opinion, to stay vigilant and to really put much more attention to that market. If you are not, of course, um, 
bothered by the opportunity to make uh, 5, 10 X on your investment. And in my opinion, this is one of the most important charts in a macro world right now to actually keep an eye at. To add additionally to your long-term kind of conviction, let's have a look on the silver against the S&P 500 chart on the monthly. How does it look like, guys? Does it look like we are making the printing the bottom formation here? And have a look where the potential targets are from here. We are clearly underpriced since the S&P 500, and the same for NASDAQ, obviously for Russell 2000, the picture would not be very much different. The question is, are we 500%, 600%, 700% um, lower than our previous target, uh, the target of our previous silver expansion? And miners and metals are following the particular long-term cycles, eight to 11 years. I will not be able to cover it in this video, but that's a particular topic that I would like to, to cover for those who is actually interested in those markets uh, into more details. One more important relative chart for today that I would like to share with you guys is silver against the M2 money supply. And you would also clearly see that all the extended liquidity that has been injected into the financial system did not yet find the way in silver. It find the way into other asset classes. And whatever the scenario is going to be, either it's going to be the Goldilocks and thus the silver as an industrial metal would have much more use, as we've seen and as ChatGPT has reminded us, or vice versa. If we're going to enter in the recession scenario and we're going to have more money printing and um, extended yield, yield curve control and uh, various injections of liquidity in the financial markets to keep it anyhow alive and simply not collapsing, the silver would be that kind of asset class where extended liquidity will find its accommodation. So I expect those further moves upwards and silver prices at mid 40s. So I hope by now you're convinced into the several things. First of all, that silver is going to outperform gold in whatever macroeconomical scenario is going to take place. Second, that silver miner is going to outperform silver in the scenario of the silver bull run. And the third, that silver junior miners would outperform significantly the major silver miners and it will be our better, our extra leverage without any risk of liquidation in the market. One particular extra benefit I enjoy about acquiring the junior miner stocks is following. We are unable to find a multiplier of price to earnings above three. Well, guys, NASDAQ is trading in 30s, S&P 500 is trading at late 20s, and it's expanding towards 30s. I believe we will be in a year or two into 32 because S&P price to earnings ratio are following those expansion and contraction periods. Here we have amazing businesses with price to earning ratio of 1.5 or two, and with the market cap of those companies between 10 to 30, 40, 50 million dollars, so little, while they literally have nearly the same amount of assets on their balance sheet. So that's an amazing opportunity from the risk reward perspective. I'm now talking to you, not like a silver aficionado, who is someone who is like very much loving that market and seeing uh, for all of us guys, an amazing opportunity here to make 10 X on our investment. I'm just speaking purely as a macro trader, as someone who is a, um, quite um, flexible and agnostic to any asset class, but just ac assessing the risk versus reward. So what is the risk here? Of course, some of those companies can go bankrupt, right? But that's why we need to keep in mind the life cycle of those companies. So in silver mining industry, we have explorers, we have developers and we have producers. That's why I try to have a lower risk and potentially smaller gains, but exposing and allocating the capital only to the producers because they're in a later stage of the value chain and they already know that they can extract the silver and can satisfy the demand of their customers. While explorers obviously have a higher risk because it's yet unclear what is an amount of silver that they will be able to extract later on. And that's why the price fluctuations there sometimes are enormous. So one of my favorite stocks is actually Aftermath Silver. And in my opinion, with where we are in the silver and uh, 
how it would actually uh, move from here gives us an amazing opportunity to have the shares of that silver junior miner. It has undergone significant developments over the past few years, but it yet has to receive the recognition from the market. And despite all the impressive advancements that it had, this stock has been adversely affected by the factors like the tax loss selling. For those who doesn't know, the tax loss selling is something that multiple jurisdictions would allow in order to offset the gains and the stocks that actually have performed quite well. So this is not a surprise, taking into account how the stock severely depreciated uh, against where it was just two years ago at $1.20, $1.50, and where we are right now at 30 cents. All the people who've bought the top, they've been significantly selling and selling and selling just to pay less taxes on the tech stocks that have been performing well during that time. So that's unfortunately the situation in multiple silver stocks silver junior stocks and with them uh, going up that situation would stop and this is why once the uptrend starts it is so 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 hard to fill your bids and this is exactly why i wanted to push out this video quite urgently during the time we, we are just breaking out uh, from this uh, consolidation falling wedge so the company actually was pretty much outperforming everyone. Let's consider it like uh, L2 on steroids to the very promising main net if you use the crypto analogy. So if you see at which levels Aftermath was just two, three years ago, and in my opinion, uh, once the silver market gains momentum, the previous highs would serve as the compelling target. Uh, interestingly enough, also Aftermath has undergone a substantial transformation in the past 24 months. They acquired the Beringella uh, assets in Peru. Uh, they bought them from SSR Mining and they actually divested from Cashinal. So I cannot unfortunately go into details within every miner what have been done in the last few years. But this is my market um, for the last uh, 40, 60 months. I've been following quite closely everything that would happen there. Uh, also taking into account that guys, these, these are stocks, those companies are listed publicly on Toronto Stock Exchange mostly. So you would see all those things, like for example, insider buybacks. You would see that the CEO and the chief financial officer of the company, for example, are accumulating $150,000 worth of their own company stock every month. So those things do not happen for no reason. This is the insider buying and you would not have those information in crypto. So please take advantage of that. My second favorite play is Sealer X or AGX as a ticker. The management holds a significant stake in the company. My strong belief is that the new silver bull era would likely bring um, several uh, thousand percent increase. Uh, and that's actually, in my opinion, also quite an ideal entry opportunity uh, because you can see that AGX stock has not moved so much, especially if we go on the daily, we're still at around 20 cents. Uh, we've been just three months ago at around 30 and uh, in a matter of a half a year, we were at twice uh, the price while silver was just at uh, 19, 20 dollars. So this, in my opinion, uh, is something where you're afraid to buy something that just run 20% despite the fact that 20%, trust me, in the junior silver minus, this is nothing. I have very often the texts from my close friends. They are saying, oh my God, my portfolio uh, just went 30% up. Should I sell? It's like, yeah, sure, you can sell 30% profit, but it's very, very unlikely that you would get your bids filled. So you are selling your 30% profit and losing 300% uh, uprise. At least take partial TPs, guys. That's very, very similar to actually trading um, the small caps and that's why i believe a lot of uh, crypto native people would appreciate that particular uh, moment in uh, silver mining because i believe those things happen um, once in a couple decades and uh, let's take advantage of this opportunity my next very favorite play is Kootenai Silver. I unfortunately started scaling a little bit too early in 2023, but right now I think you have an amazing opportunity where on the weekly chart we are breaking out out of those accumulation range and next target for me will be two and further on three US dollars per share. The good thing about Kootenai is that in a way, a rookie. Uh, their cost of production is quite high, and that's why during the 
era of cheap silver, the stock has been so much suppressed. And uh, the fact that the um, Kutni silver is actually the third cheapest silver stock out there per uh, ounce base already tells you a lot. That's something that I mentioned prior. That would be my uh, higher better, um, taking into account their uh, relatively extended cost of production. So uh, I would believe that they can prove uh, 50 uh, million ounces of high grade at Columba. And uh, combined with their other assets that Kutni owns, they definitely can outperform uh, their targets of 2020. I can also very well imagine the question, hey Russ, why are you touching all those silver miners if there is already an established silver junior ETF SILG that you mentioned several times? Well, the reason for those is simply because I don't like the composition of this ETF. Of course, for those who have several thousand dollars to allocate, I would say probably it's the best in terms of the amount of effort you can put into those, but I do not expect there that much of a significant move of course doubling or tripling your money and a maximum it doesn't sound very bad at all especially if sealer does that amazing run that in my opinion it would however uh there we are talking uh about quite a particular uh companies that are uh, within that etf so we're speaking about harmony gold we're speaking about pan american silver speaking about heckler mining and so on those companies are roughly at um four or five, uh, six, sometimes 12 billion dollar market caps. So on the other hand side, I can clearly understand that not so many people are willing to put their money, uh, especially if it's like uh, life savings or retirement money into the 30, 50 million dollar market cap companies. Even they have a perspective to become half a billion dollar companies because the junior miners, which are underlying uh, silver junior ETF are already at five billion dollar market cap with the prospect of becoming 15 million dollar market caps. However, everyone has their own risk profile and if you ask me, I would definitely put uh, my money into both, uh, making sure that my uh, smaller, let's say the riskier part of the portfolio is not more than uh, my 10% uh, of my entire portfolio. For more uh, sustainable or let's say less risky plays, I would also look at the Vanek Jr. Gold ETF. Uh, here we are forming this Adam and Eve or W, if you wish, uh, formation on the weekly. And I believe the accumulation uh, have actually taken place and our next targets would be uh, in the zones of 60s where we've just been a couple of years ago. So, right, it's not like uh, something um, absolutely outstanding. It's just to <laughs> swipe the liquidity um, from the year or two ago. With the upcoming silver correction that we discussed, I would try to allocate more into the ETFs and into the particular uh, miners that I mentioned today, because I believe the next move will be all the way up to 30 and then potential uh, actually swipe of that low that can be aligned with the stock market uh, instability or potential geopolitical news. So please don't be shaken out in that move. We are Yes, sometimes printing the market structure break, but don't get shaken out at those levels because in my opinion, the next move is actually our proper wave three from the Elliott wave perspective where we would go to the higher 30s. And that would be a certain degree of consolidation into our late 30s on a way to late 40s or 50s. So yes, that's how I am bullish on silver. And this is how I would play all the underlying ETFs and underlying silver junior miners. I can imagine what you're feeling right now. Damn, Ross, if silver is still gonna do potentially 2.53x from here, how that would be great to allocate into more miners. I know, guys, I know, I feel you. And that's why I am also providing you the miners that did not yet run. And that's why I wanted to push that video as soon as possible. Some of my portfolio companies are already 500% up from September and November lows. Uh, actually, yeah, let's have a look at my trades uh, here. I'm gonna bring them to the screen and um, you see that uh, it's not that easy to find uh, but I still have a nice pick for you so if you love my video today please click the like button I really want it to be seen by more people because in my opinion uh, this is something a lot of people especially um, in the research field or on YouTube are still like not really awakened to so please give support to this video and with that said I give you one more pick 
And that's gonna be Outcrop Silver. The ticker is OCG. I really like their team. I really like their uh, CEO. I really like uh, how they rank in terms of um, their grades. Their average is 550 to 750 grams uh, uh, of silver equivalent per ton. And there are a bunch of producers out there that with way smaller uh, grades, way lower grades, I trade at a three, four, sometimes five X multiple. So uh, in my opinion, I, it's also a, a little bit of a uh, lower risk. I uh, wanted to give you one of the companies which has $100 million plus market cap. Uh, please do not rush into those right now. I believe silver would give us a tiny bit of uh, a dip and a consolidation uh, below the resistance and then we potentially would accept into that range. So my targets here would be first of all 40 cents and then um, easily 70 towards where we were just two years ago. I understand it can be a little bit too much of information, especially for the first uh, entry into that asset class. So I wanted to keep my video for today concise, but please let me know in the comments down below if you are looking forward to invest. I would cover my exits out of those companies in the Telegram group for those who are interested. And also guys, please let me know if you'd like me to cover more uh, of my portfolio companies in details or overall, uh, maybe how the ETFs uh, that are surrounding this asset class are performing and where I'm looking at getting into them or getting out. Thank you so much for watching today. I wish you a great end of the week and hope to see you all soon. Have a great one. Bye bye.